Aha, there we go. All right, well, yeah, so, so these are comfort dogs. Now, well, first of all, this dog was raised in a former student's home. Marshall Frisk and Calissa Frisk now, she, they, they, they got married. They were both former students. Now, you know how much this dog cost? Very much. 12 grand. Now, this one was actually like trained in, in like a normal person's home. Some of, them, some of them are trained in prisons. Why don't you go to the animal shelter and pick up a Rottweiler or something like that? And... <laughs> nothing that says, nothing says comfort like a Rottweiler. Right? <laughs> now, what's interesting, like, so my church here in Mequon, Beautiful Savior, just got one of these too, this, this over uh, the su or winter break or what, I don't know. We got it not that long ago. What do you feed these dogs for? I don't. I don't get it. Because sometimes students miss their dogs when they're away from home, and they get, oh. they get but it's not. For, but it's not for just students. I mean, you know, like uh, when there's like disasters in the area, like you know, our our church gets called, and we have to like dispatch our dog out to comfort people. Like when, like those tornadoes hit Illinois, like our dog, like with the handlers, they had to uproot and go and to disaster recovery so the, the people could pet the dog. You know, these people lost their homes and loved ones and with the, the dog. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying the dog made it worse. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, yeah, he's like, oh, your knee hurts? Let me break your finger. Let's see how much your knee hurts. Oh, at least they made the decaf strong today. I like really like rich coffee. I don't need the caffeine, but I like it when you get some like some grit in there. I leave some of the grounds. And there's a lot of caffeine. Yeah, gives you something to chew on. Well, yeah, suck on a coffee bean. No, actually, well, I guess it's possible they could just put caffeinated coffee inside the bucket that says decaf. But the way you know you're drinking out of the decaf is it's always a thing that's completely full. I never have to worry about them running out of decaf. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't get these comfort dogs things. I mean, there there are better things my church could have spent twelve grand on. But it also could be that I've just, I mean, I, I I'm a I'm an animal person. We have cats. I love my cats and stuff. But I mean, for those of you who've met Gracie, she's not a comfort cat. <laughs> After I'm, I'm currently on uh, putting triple antibiotic ointment all over my like stomach. I fell asleep on the couch the other day wearing just like a like a overshirt, like you know, like a wife beater, one of those things. I was wearing the one that has like it looks like blood stains, but it's actually a hot dog. I dropped a hot dog with ketchup on it. But in any case, I wake up and there's like blood seeping through this thing. Gracie was laying on me and just like pawing at me, just ripped my whole stomach up. Cat's vicious. <laughs> Yeah, two of my cats are 25% lynx. They have serrated claws. That way, when they go in and they pull out, it tears. Man, those cats are awesome. She's so violent. Are you keeping her away from your wife right now? No, my wife's probably holding her. No, Gracie's very bipolar. If it's me or my wife, she's all lap catty and stuff. Anybody else? She's an emissary of death. All right. Oh, she hates people. <clears throat> Just the homework assignment? Mm -hmm. All right. Can we see the screen fine, or you want to get the front light? I'll ask that randomly again, and we'll see if Abe actually ends up just getting up. And <laughs> Abe goes to my church. What do you think about this comfort dog? Or maybe I go to your church. Who's been there longer? How long have you been in that church? Not as long as you. All right. Uh, like, don't you think we could have spent twelve grand on something? No, actually, I don't. You know what? Uh, you know, I want whatever the uh, yeah. You know, our church could have bought like you know like like twenty PS4s. <laughs> Is that right? Twenty. Quarter bucks. Yeah. 
Morton Coin. Thirty. Thirty PS4s. That would have been a much better thing. We could have had a PS4 for every every few. All right, I already have a 300. This is from last semester. Let's get rid of this crap. Or last year. Deleted. I'm sure there's nothing important in there. I love doing that, like spending three class periods writing this golden code and just deleting it in front of everybody. All right, there we go. So we created a 300 project. I'll right click on source. We'll do a new class. I'll call this main class driver. Everybody remember how to do the hello world program from uh, from heart? Pretty much. By the end of your uh, career in computer science, you should know how to do it in multiple languages. I don't think that apple juice was any good. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I thought it was orange juice too, but it's clearly there's an apple. And it says apple juice. If it was orange juice, it was really bad orange juice. All right, so there's our working hello world program. All right, so let's see. What does the homework assignment say we're supposed to do? Number one. Okay, you're supposed to write these methods, right? Is palindrome. Man, that's a hard word to spell. That takes a string as a parameter and returns true if it's a palindrome and false otherwise. Palindrome, same forwards and backwards? Mm -hmm. All right. Man, I should, I should know what I'm asking when I'm I i do not remember what I was doing when I wrote these. All right, so we're going to write a method down here. And we're going to make it static since we're going to call it from within the uh, um, the class. What is when I put static in front of a method? What does that mean about the method? Class method. What's a class method? How do you call a class method? Using the name of the class in which the method was defined. And what's the name of the class that we're defining this method in? Driver. Driver. Okay. So we're going to say public Boolean because this guy's going to return true or false. Is palindrome. Drone. That? Yeah. This guy's going to take a string S as a parameter. Okay. So this guy returns true if S, the guy we passed in, is the same forwards and backwards and false otherwise, right? Okay. A um, couple different ways we can pull this off. Uh, we can walk the string forwards and backwards at the same time. So here, let's write this a couple different ways. It'll be an interesting way to show uh, some different, different things. So I'm going to create a for loop. So I'm going to say for int i is equal to zero. That's the beginning of the... Um, the string, right? And then I'm going to say int j is equal to, I don't think you've seen this before, creating two different counters inside of a for loop. Um, int j is equal to s dot length minus one. We're going to keep going as long as i is less than s dot length. And each time through, we're going to increment i, and we're also going to decrement j. I don't, I don't need this uh, in, in front of that one. So I'm defining two separate variables here. I'm defining a integer i starting off at 0, and I'm defining an integer j starting it off at the last legal bucket in my string. Make sense? Okay. I'm going to keep going as long as i is less than s dot length. 
I know that I and Jay are going to track each other, right? One goes towards the front, one goes towards the end. Each time through, I'm going to increment I and decrement J. Now, what am I interested in? I'm interested in whether or not I, that the character at position I, is different than the character at position J. If they're different, that means that we are not looking at a palindrome. Right? Go ahead. Say this again. Nurses run. Nurses run. Oh, so with spaces. It also takes up symbols. No, well, let's just say we can make it work for any of those. Well, let's do a simple case here, and then we'll... So it seems like you went into some pretty technical definitions of palindrome. Is that... I mean, I wrote... What I did was I wrote the spaces first. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do some remove spaces, but let's let's do this first. So this will just do, this assumes no spaces, right? So what we're writing here. So we're going to say if s dot char at i is not equal to s dot char at j, if that, those guys are not equal to each other, then what's true? Well, that means we do not have a palindrome, right? If we don't have a palindrome, we're going to return false. We found... Characters that should be the same that are not the same. Correct? Now, if I survive this minefield, that is this for loop, then I can return true. Must be a palindrome. Make sense? So, this guy, as of right now, should work for things like, uh, what, race car? So, if I do... Printlin driver dot is palindrome like that. It should return true, correct? So there's my true. If I throw a random couple of there, not a palindrome. It should be false. Okay, so that would have been sufficient for the assignment. So taking it a step further, um, you wanted to remove all the spaces. That's what you said, right? Okay, so to make this kind of foolproof, we would have said static... String remove spaces. Take a string in there, and we're going to create a new string. So we'll spin through our entire original string, and if S dot char at i, if the current character we're looking we're looking at is not equal to a space, then we'll keep it. In the end, we'll return answer. Like that. Make sense? Now, what was the uh, example of one that it should work for? It, Nurses, space, run, like that. Okay, so as it stands right now, this won't work. This will give us a false, correct? So there's our false. But if I go in here and I say s is equal to driver dot remove spaces s, now it works. So what's the first thing I did inside of my in is palindrome is I changed s to whatever the remove spaces version of s is by calling my remove spaces method. This was not required for the assignment. If you would have done something along the lines of if they're literally spelled forwards and backwards correctly, that was sufficient for what I was looking for. Okay. This is just showing off, Abe. 
Although, technically, it sounds like you took the assignment seriously and looked up what a palindrome was. Okay. So, that's one solution to the assignment that you could have done with is palindrome. Uh, let's see, another way we could have done it is we could have written a method called reverse. It takes a string as a parameter, and its job was to reverse whatever string you passed in. So, make a little widget. So, we'll say string answer is equal to the empty string. For int i is equal to s dot length minus 1. So we'll start at the end of our string. Keep going as long as i is greater than or equal to 0. And decrement i each time. So we'll walk our string from the end towards the front. And what are we going to do each time? We're going to concatenate on our character. And in the end, return answer. So reverse should give us the whatever string we pass it backwards. That make sense? So if that's the case, what we could have done inside of is palindrome, get rid of all this crap, we could have return s dot equals driver dot reverse s. Whether or not the string we're passing it is the same as the string in reverse. Does that make sense? So if I change this back to race car. Hello. What did I do? I was testing you. Nobody caught that the first time around. Really? Raise your hand if you caught that. That's not everybody. All right. So, that makes sense? So I wrote a little widget here to reverse a string. What did his palindrome do? It called our, um, whatever string we passed in, checked to see if it was equivalent to the reverse of whatever string we passed in. If we want to make that work for all of these guys, we'll say s is equal to driver dot remove spaces s. So, now that guy should work for our none thingy. As long as we don't have capital letters. Well, in capital letters, do they count? Well, all right. I'll make it. I'll make it even more better. All right. So now it's true. That works. So you're saying that this should also work? Okay. So we'll just convert the entire string. After we remove all the spaces, we will then convert it to lowercase. So we're guaranteed that it's made up entirely of lowercase characters. All right, so now it'll work for Nurse's Run with a capital N at the beginning. All right, what else? Uh, any hyphens or commas? Or... They get ignored too? Oh my god. Really? <laughs> so, so what what are the, what are the symbols I have to remove? Basically all of them. What are all of them? Uh, hyphen, comma. Hyphen, comma, exclamation point. Uh, colon, semicolon. Uh, Everything that's not a 
Well, I'm doing that. Oh, I mean, are we only keeping A through Zs? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Well, that is easier. All right, whole alphabet. We're going to go through string answer is equal to the empty string for int i is equal to. So if the current character I'm looking at um, is inside of crap to keep, then I'm going to keep it. Otherwise, I'm going to dump it. So then down here inside of remove spaces, before I remove spaces, I'm going to say, well here, we'll just do it in a couple of, I'm going to say s is equal to driver dot remove crap s. Then we'll say remove spaces s, and then we'll convert it to lowercase. So now, this thing should work for, uh, here, I'll just there. That should still work. That's, yeah. All right. Yeah. Cup of coffee, one down. All right, does that cover our bases for his palindrome? I expected a solution. Every bit as robust as what we <laughs> As long as your solution uh, captured the gist of what I was asking, that was fine. So is this complete now? Ish. So it's good enough for the Amish. All right, that was question number one. Question two, remove spaces. Oh, we already did that. It almost seems like I did this on purpose. So you're supposed to write a method called remove spaces that takes a string as a parameter and returns a new string, which is the same as the original string with all the spaces removed. Ha-ha! So remove spaces, create a brand new string. We're going to go through, we're going to keep non-spaces. So remember, strings we have to build from scratch when we're taking things out of them. So um, instead of thinking about it in terms of removing something, we're going to think about it as keeping things that are not what we want to remove. Make sense? So that's remove spaces. Last thing. Is this the last one? Upper and lower, which takes a string as a parameter and returns a new string which is the same as the original string with all characters in even positions in uppercase and all characters in I positions in lowercase. Okay. Uh, uh. Uh, did we know about uh, the two uppercase and two lowercase methods in character? Okay, good. Not in string, but in char the character class. All right, what was the name of this method? Upper and lower. So static string upper and 
whatever, lower string s as a parameter. So we're going to build a brand new string. We'll spin through our entire um, input string. We need to be able to detect if we're looking at an even bucket or an odd bucket, right? So, a couple different ways we could have done this. To detect even or odd, we could do what? We can mod by two, check to see if it's equal to zero, right? Evenly divisible by zero. Well, we know that the even buckets are going to be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, so on and so forth, right? So I'm going to create a little Boolean is even. I'm going to start this guy off at true. So if is even, we can actually just say if is even, that's good enough. If that guy's currently true, then what are we going to do? We're going to say answer is equal to whatever answer currently is equal to concatenated with character dot to uppercase s dot char at i. And then we'll say is even is equal to false. Well, I misspelled character. Yeah. Else answer is equal to answer concatenated with character dot to ah lowercase s dot char at i is even is equal to true return answer So that should pull that off, I think. Two uppercase and two lowercase, if you give it something that isn't two uppercaseable or two lowercaseable, it'll just spit it back out its normal. If it was a comma, it'll spit out a comma. If it was a space, it'll spit out a space. So we'll test this. So there's our hello, upper and lower case, blah, blah, blah. Make sense? So interesting trick here is uh, um, because we understand how uh, even and odd works. We know that we're just going back and forth. So why not just use a toggle switch as opposed to modulus arithmetic and that kind of stuff. The first one we know is even. The second one we know is odd. The third one is even. The fourth one is odd. So we started even off, is even off at true, switch it to false, switch it back to true, switch it to false, switch it back to true, so on and so forth. So that's another pattern that might come in helpful for other problems. Now, speaking of patterns, notice as we go through here, upper and lower case, we started with a blank string, built a string up. Remove crap, started with a blank string, built crap up. Remove spaces, blank string, built the string up. Reverse, blank string, built the string up. Is palindrome was different, but Notice that we solved a bunch of different problems using the exact same pattern. You could even go beyond that. Reverse, blank string, loop that looped through the entire string. Blank string, loop that looped through the entire string. Blank string, loop that looped through the entire string. Blank string, loop that looped through the entire string. Exact same pattern over and over and over and over again. 
So that becomes kind of your go-to pattern. Just like I say you should be able to sit down and start by writing a hello world program off the top of your head. You know, whenever you're building up a string, this should almost be your cookie cutter starting point. And then modify as necessary. Kind of make sense? Okay, so you want to take as much thought out of it as possible for the structure of the solution. Then you get into the, you know, the innards of each of these solutions where we actually have to ask our question. What should we do before we do it? What should we do before we do it? What should we do before we do it? So all these still following the same pattern. We ask a question, we respond to it. This one, we didn't even have to do that. We just walked our string backwards. Didn't even have to ask the question. We knew we were going through in the right order. No questions required. Okay, that makes sense? All right. So that is the solution or a solution to your homework assignment. Um, obviously, if you don't write every single line identically to how I wrote it here, it's probably a zero. Um, I should be able to grade these tonight. Um, I would think certainly you'll have them back before uh, class on Thursday. Um, remember, uh, if you didn't already do so, go back and update your uh, solution. Make sure that you've put in the self-evaluation. Follow the homework assignment requirements. Okay. Uh, let's go. What happened to my keynote? I know, it's like messed up. All right. Where's this class? Did we have a keynote last time? Oh, did I? Okay, this is what we were doing, right? Okay. So this was a, I think we were looking at command line arguments, arrays of strings. Yeah, I had to be looking at command line arguments. So if we have an array of strings, it'll look like this where we have an array, which points to, so the, we built that array like this. String array AR equals new string array. So we're creating three buckets, each capable of holding a string. Well, what's a string? A string is a pointer which points to an array of characters. So here's our three bucket array. Each uh, um, pointer in our array is a 32-bit number. How did we come up with this? Yeah, these should be memory addresses. But this should be 102, 104, 108. Oh, I was showing the example from like a C language or something? Okay, well, in Java, it would look like this. In Java, memory addresses, Java is a 32-bit language. Memory addresses are 32 bits big or four bytes, 100, 104, 108. So each of these buckets in my array holds a memory address. So this memory address points to the beginning of this string. 
this memory address points to the beginning of this string, this memory address points to the beginning of this string. That makes sense? Okay, so that's how a, um, uh, an array of strings would look. Similarly, if we had an array of integers, or an array of primitives. So an array of objects would look like this, any kind of object. Each object is a pointer. That pointer um, uh, is stored in each bucket of the array, and it actually points someplace else in memory where that object exists. If we have an array of primitives, for instance, integer array ar is equal to a new in array 3, an int is a primitive type. And what's a primitive type? built into the language and can only hold a value. So that's the, the limit to the magic tricks it knows how to do. So if we are building something like that, uh, let's take this a step further. Let's say AR at bucket zero is equal to three AR at So we'll go ahead and fill our array up there real quick. So we'll say three. Um, and actually, just for the sake of this argument, let me change these to chars. That way you'll actually see the difference between um, our two arrays. All right, so we'll build a char array, capable of holding three chars. Bucket zero will put an A, bucket one will put a G, bucket two will put a Z. So there's our A. There's our G. There's our Z. So assuming our starting memory address is still 100, that would be 100, 102, 104. Here's AR. AR actually holds. The memory address just points to the beginning of the array. So it'll point to the first element of our array. Now, going back here, notice that we're jumping from 100 to 104 to 108. Why is that? Because Java is a 32-bit language. And what are we storing inside of this array? Well, you're storing memory addresses. So in Java, memory address is 32 bits big. Make sense? 32 bits or four bytes. Four times age is 32. Those are the same number, 32 bits, four bytes. Okay, so we're jumping by bytes here. 100, 104, 108. Um, so that's why those memory addresses look like this. AR holds the beginning memory address, a pointer to the front of our array. The first element is at memory address 100, plus zero, because this is bucket zero. Actually, let me do it this way. That's bucket zero. That's bucket one. That's bucket two. Make sense? Okay. So, bucket zero of AR is at 100 plus zero times size of memory address, which is 32, or four bytes. So zero times four is zero, 100 plus zero is 100. This is where bucket zero is, right here. Bucket one is at 100 
plus one times size of memory address, which is four. One times four is four. 100 plus four is 104, so this is where bucket one is. Bucket two is 100, the base address, plus two times size of memory address. Two times four is eight. 100 plus eight is 108. This is where bucket two is. Make sense? So again, that gets back to that idea that arrays must be contiguous in memory. They have to be in a row in memory. Now, just to remind you where we're going with this, last time we started talking a little bit about data structures. We talked about them being structures for holding data. And we started reviewing arrays because that was kind of our first data structure. And we want to talk about how arrays work, and also we want to think about what are the weaknesses of arrays, if they have any weaknesses. Okay? So, this is how an array of pointers would work, whether we're dealing with strings or any other object. Okay, if I'm giving you some proof on this, let's go back to our, um, I'm just going to quickly create a new class in here. New class. Create a class called Amish. And I'm not going to put anything inside there. It's just going to be an empty, useless class for, class right now. You know, well, I must don't use technology, so it makes sense. Okay, remember, all objects come with a no-argument constructor that does nothing by default, unless we want to write our own constructor. So as an example, we'll come out here. So I just built this class called Amish and put nothing in it, literally nothing, just to prove a point here. So we'll come into main here. All this extra crap down here is meaningless. In fact, here. Look at that. First half hour class, gone. Gone. Useless. I wrote that. That was the real time version of the remove crap method. <laughs> I like my lectures to be complete. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, what was I doing? <laughs> oh, Amish. That's right. <laughs> Look, if I can program on one hour of sleep across five days, you guys can program. I probably should have gone with caffeinated coffee. Not a good idea. I, I'm pretty awake, actually, right now. It was the, the bad apple juice, I think, has my body in recovery mode. So I'll go ahead and create an instance of Amish. Blah, it's new Amish. Okay, so again, as a review, even though we didn't write anything inside of this object, Java provided for us a constructor that takes no parameters, specifically so that this syntax right here worked, so that our new keyword can go and get us something. Make sense? Now, the second we go in here and we rewrite our own um, constructor, that no argument constructor doesn't get created for us. Okay, we don't get that plus whatever one we wrote. If you decide to write your own constructor, Java does not provide one for you. It's kind of like 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 the law, right? You know, like you get you can hire a lawyer, or they'll give you one. But if you hire one, they don't also give you one. It's exactly like that. See, we incorporate a world events. Justin Bieber. You guys heard about that petition to send it back to Canada? <laughs> What's up? I, over 100,000. The, they have the White House has some policy that if you get a petition with over 100,000 things, they have to respond, officially respond to it or something. Whatever. They're not going to deport them to Canada. <laughs> I mean, he's... He's an out-of-control 18-year-old, 19-year-old, just like most 18- or 19-year-olds are, except he has a bunch of money. So, <laughs> so his is getting televised, and instead of it being a beat-up Chevy, it's a Lamborghini. <laughs> Other than that, the same crap. I don't know, society is destroying these people. Oh, yeah. Just like that actor, the Seymour guy. They, when they, they haven't released the official autopsy thing yet, but I mean, it's pretty clear it's a heroin overdose. 
And he found him with a syringe still in his arm. Um, and like 40 bags of heroin around the... These guys make too much money and then and then they're they're exposed to this stuff. Or you're a drug dealer. You know, are you gonna target the people who have the money who can buy your drugs, or are you gonna target the you know the, the dude walking out to his car at Walmart? Well, probably both. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the right product for your clientele is what I'm saying. <laughs> but I don't know. I think some of these actors are kinda and other famous people are kind of set up to fail because of what you know they have so much money afforded to them and the stuff's just thrown in their face it's terrible and that's not the way you want it you don't want to die with a syringe still in your arm yeah that's not the way you want to go out you want it to at least be questionable what a dead giveaway i get it all right so we created our instance of amish here variable name is blah now I'm going to go and I'm going to do system.out.println blah. And what's the output going to be? <laughs> it will be a fully completed and painted barn. <laughs> Obviously. So here. <laughs> we just keep building barns. If we don't need it now, we will in the future. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what the Amish do when they wake up in the morning and they have nothing to do. They just build a barn. You know, just in case. So, creating objects in Java. Again, an object is a data structure. So, well, here, let's go back here. We just did uh, Amish blah is equal to new Amish. And what did that create for us? It created for us a variable name blah. I try to be sensitive to religion. Yeah. Well, I make fun of them at a very cursory level. I don't get into the, uh, the, uh, there's a better word for it than that. Theology? Unless it's a Christian theology, then we can get into it. But I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, we're not gonna talk about like Muslim theology. We'll make fun of them. But I also have to make fun of the Amish. Are the Amish Christian? Kind of, sort of, maybe? Ish? ish. They're Christian ish? We have a comparative religion class here on campus, don't we? I think so. I hope they talk about, do they talk about the Amish in there? Anybody taking their comparative religion class? I bet you that class is fascinating. All right, so we have a variable called blah of type Amish right here. All right, and what are we going to do with this guy? We're going to give him a value. Hold on. I want to make sure it's the same size. There we go. All right. Oh. Okay, so now this has just became a, a fill-in-the-blank quiz type thing. So I have a variable named blah. Variables hold values, right? What's the new keyword do? Real estate agent. What's the real estate agent do for us? Gives us a memory address. So what gets stored inside of blah? Memory address. So here, well, seems like 100 is our favorite memory address. Because the math is easy. So blah will hold 100, which points here. And what's the value here? What 
it's this guy. Yeah, so this guy is an Amish, right? Whatever an Amish is. Okay? That's what this guy is. Now, if an Amish holds five fields, this guy might contain pointers to five different fields or something like that. But, you know, the actual value at this memory address is an Amish, whatever that is. But the value that blah holds is a memory address, which points to where our Amish is actually in memory. Make sense? So given that, let's get output right here. Here's the model. If I print out the value of blah, what will print, what will print out? What's the value of blah? A memory address. So there's our creepy memory address. Make sense? It looks like the email address. It does. Except there's no .com or .org or... So the Amish, the nonconformist, <laughs> just gives a GPS location of the... <laughs> Actually, would the Amish use GPS? Not the technology of it, but the idea of GPS. You know, they might say, you know, start at ye old woods, take 3,264 steps to the to ye east, ye old ye. <laughs> I don't know if the Amish say ye. <laughs> I just decided. I've mixed them with the old British. <laughs> That's Tom Tom or Garmin. Or <laughs> Place on the back of the <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyways, make sense? So blah here is a variable of type Amish. That variable holds a value. What, va what value does it hold? Whatever's returned by the real estate agent. What's returned by the real estate agent? Every single time you ever see the new keyword on the right side of an equal sign, whatever is going to come out in the variable will be a memory address 100% of the time. More proof, int array ar equals new int array 10,000, print out ar, what will, it, what will this output? A memory address. Make sense? Okay. Actually, it's kind of interesting. You could see some of the people, for those of you, well, only one person is in the 450 class and he left already. Must have offended him with the Amish stuff. Um, maybe at a tennis meeting. Notice the naming convention they've used to represent a variable of type integer array, square bracket, I. So what if we change this to a char array? That would be my guess. I'll put. Come on. I think I may have broken. <laughs> did break Java. Now let's close Eclipse and reopen it. Huh? Well, I think I broke Eclipse the first time around.
This is weird. Oh, actually, this could be interesting. I think it is printing out. Let me test something here real quick. This is a shorthand for defining a array with stuff in it. So this will actually create a uh, five bucket character array, filling it with H, E, L, L, and O. And I think when I print this, it'll print out hello. Yeah. All right, the reason nothing printed out is because a character array with no characters in it is equivalent to the empty string. Char arrays are treated as special cases um, because a string is actually implemented as a char array. So to actually get the example I was trying to give you, let's turn this into a long array. And chances are this thing should give us square bracket L. Square bracket J. Let's run this again. A bite. Okay, so that made sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. There is no logic in this place. <laughs> I wonder what the J stands for. Maybe L is, using, is being used for something else. Could be, but why J? Because they needed a letter and they picked one out of a hat. How about like I I, like or B I big integer. <laughs> there actually is a big integer class, but that would be the at big integer thing, like we saw with the Amish when we printed out blah. Notice it uses the actual name of the class as part of the memory address. So this is the Java Virtual Machine fake memory address here. This is a hexadecimal number, but this is the type of object that's at it. So a little insight into kind of what's happening under the hood in... Um, uh, in Java. Man, that's puzzling. That's long. I really can't think of what else would have a uh, square bracket L because it would have to be within um, array. Or an, yeah, an array. We're out of primitive types. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's look at Boolean. Ah, uh, because I can see B. Well, because B is already taken for byte. Yeah. But why Z? Linked list, link list would be linked list. It would be. It's an object type. Yeah. Although you guys don't know about the built-in linked list class. You only know about the linked list class that you're going to be writing in here. Then I'll show you the built-in linked list class, which does all your hard work just for you. <laughs> But I'm officially going on record here and saying you cannot complete any of your assignments using the built-in linked list class. You have to write your own.
Kind of like you can't go to the car dealership and buy a Hyundai. You have to build your own car if you want to go to the grocery store. <laughs> and because of automatic garbage collection, it gets destroyed each time you come home. <laughs> and you're done using it. <laughs> you got to build it again next trip. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Okay. What was I doing? Okay. So, again, new keyword always returns memory addresses. So, return a memory address here. Return a memory address here. Now, the difference between a char array and a array of strings was the size of a char. A char is a 16-bit unsigned integer because it, it maps the Unicode character set, 0 to 65,535. So chars are represented as integers inside the Java language, and they're unsigned integers. They don't have to hold negative numbers. So it's a, a char's footprint is 16 bits or 2 bytes in size. Therefore, the array, bucket 0, for our char array, this is bucket 0, bucket 1, bucket 2. Bucket 0 is at base address 100 plus 0 times size of char, which is 2 bytes. So 100 plus 0 is 100. Bucket 1, 100 plus 1 times size of char, which is 2, is 102. Plus 2 times size of char is 4, 104. Make sense? So that's how arrays work. And they have to be contiguous in memory because we use pointer arithmetic like this to walk through memory to get to the individual buckets of an array. This is bucket 0, this is bucket 1, this is bucket 2. Make sense? Strings are actually double pointers, where we have an array of strings. Bucket zero is here, which has a pointer. So this pointer points to another pointer. And here's that pointer right here, 200, which points someplace else in memory for the actual character array that makes up that string. This pointer at bucket one points to this pointer, which points to here, which points to here. I think I showed some, uh, like the Hello World program in a couple of different languages last time, didn't I? And one of the things you saw in um, C, the C version of this, was this guy. Char pointer pointer, argv. So this is equivalent to saying string array in Java. So we have a pointer which points to another pointer. That makes sense? So that's the evidence of that, that it still exists. That's the way it still works under the hood, is this is a language for the 1970s that Java is based on. And it still works that way. Just Java's cleaned up the syntax a little bit to make it look prettier. Make sense? Okay, so that's the idea of arrays and I, I guess also objects. So those are kind of our first data structures we've seen. Objects is a very generic data structure because we're really going to implement all of our data structures in terms of objects. But even a generic object like Amish that does very little or something like that as we have it currently written or, you know, cat, dog, whatever uh, objects we want to make, even the most generic useless object is still a data structure. Make sense? Okay, so arrays. One of the benefits of arrays is that they are fast. Because they are in contiguous memory and can be traversed using pointer, I'm just going to say pointer math. I don't want to have to spell arithmetic. So the gateway drug to get to bucket three is just a math problem. Go to the base address, add to it three times the size of whatever you're storing. Make sense? And now you're at that value. So that's one of the benefits of arrays, is that they're fast. 
What's a disadvantage of a race? Go ahead. You have to say, like, I want so many buckets, and then afterwards, what if you needed more? Or like, what if you don't know exactly how many you would need? Okay. Like Certainly, a disadvantage would be must know size ahead of time. You have to know how many things you're planning on storing before you start storing them, because you have to build that structure ahead of time. Okay, that's certainly a disadvantage. Uh, another disadvantage. I don't know how often, how often it's an issue, but it has to be all in one, has to be contiguous. Yeah, it's memory inefficient. You know, we're, we're putting the, uh, um, the stress on the new keyword to go and find us a big enough plot of land to build the entire array in one place. It makes sense for real life. You build a skyscraper in one plot of land, right? But with our computer memory, you may run into a situation where you have enough total free memory in your computer to store the array, but you don't have enough contiguous free memory in your computer to store the array. This would only come into play for really big arrays, but arrays typically are memory inefficient. Make sense? All right, so we'll come back on Thursday and start talking about linked lists. Sound good? All right, I'll see everybody on Thursday.